All right, uh, good morning. This is going to be uh, the first homework. This is chapter one, section one, and section two for the analysis class, uh, number patterns and arithmetic sequences. I'm gonna do my best to go over some of this stuff. Uh, mostly it'll be done on the screen here. So we're gonna see how that works. And uh, you guys hopefully should be totally prepared for the uh, homework and uh, then we can just not fall behind, all right? Uh, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Uh, I am going to be, you know, I am gonna be in the building, uh, but it doesn't mean I can come up and help you guys, you know, unfortunately. Uh, but shoot me an email anyway, maybe I can come up and just answer a question here or there, maybe. I'm gonna be grading IAs. So with that being said, uh, let's go and get started. Okay, let's get started here. Okay. First thing we're going to be talking about, number patterns and arithmetic sequences. Okie dokie. So, uh, arithmetic. So what are we talking about? Uh, when we talk about a sequence, a sequence is just a list of numbers in a row. Okay? So the number is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's a sequence. Another one might be negative 1, 10, 5. Four, that's a sequence. We could also do the primes. So two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, uh, 17, 19, uh, 23, so on. Like that's also a sequence. So it doesn't have to necessarily have an equation or anything, it's just a list of numbers. Now what's special about certain sequences is that they might follow a certain pattern. And one particularly famous one is the arithmetic sequence. That's where it differs by a constant amount. And we're gonna to get to some examples here hopefully in a second. The general term for an arithmetic sequence is this equation right here, wherein the, uh, it's the first term plus n minus one times the common difference. n is like what term we are on, and d is the common difference. So if I'm on the first term, n would be one. If I were on the fifth term, n would be 5. And d is just the common difference. So how much is it going up or down by consistently? So if the sequence were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, um, then the difference would be 1 because we're adding 1 every single time. Okay? And we need to be very good with algebra in order to figure out missing components. All right. So that goes without saying that that's the name of this class. Um, now let me just make sure. Do we have a nice example about systems of equations? Uh, it doesn't look like we do. All right, so before we, before we go any further, um, let's actually look at some of these questions just that, that goes with the slideshow. <clears throat> okay, so if I zoom out a little bit here. All right, so uh, say number one, for example, it says write down the next three terms in each sequence. Well, you got negative eight, negative 11, negative 14, negative 17. Notice that this is an arithmetic sequence. We are definitely, you know, going down by three every time. So the next one would be negative 20, uh, negative 23, and uh, negative 26. All right. This one we're going up by seven every time. All right, so uh, 36, plus seven would be 43, then 50, then 57. Kind of like that. Oh, did I? Wait. The, this one's going up by seven. This one's going up by nine. Oh, I see. This one's going up by 11. So it's going up by uh, the next odd number. That's what's going on. Okay, so then the next one would be going up by 13. So 36 plus 13 is 49. And then you gotta add 15 to that, I get 64. Then you gotta add 17 to that, which would give you 81, I think. Yeah, and so on and so forth. All right, now arithmetic sequences are going to be pretty interesting. Uh, here we got some recursive sequences, which is gonna be fun. List out the first five terms for each of the following recursive sequences. So the way you read this, is we're saying the general term is going to be negative 4 times the last term, all right, T times the one before it. 
and the first term here is one. Okay, so let's just let's just work it out here, right? Here's one, and that's the first term. The next one would be negative four times one. You know, the next one would be negative four times the last guy. You know, negative four times one is just negative four. Now we're going to multiply by negative four again to get sixteen. Then we're going to multiply by negative 4 again, which is now uh, negative 64. And then multiply by negative 4 again, which is 256. Kind of like that. All right. So that's what that means. Uh, this one means we're saying take negative 2 and divide it by the last guy. All right. But divided by the one before. So un is negative 2 divided by the one from before. And so on and so forth. All right, so these are typical sequences. Um, I don't know. Should I keep going with this? Uh, where's the arithmetic? Oh, number four is where we start talking about arithmetic sequences. All right. Uh, but so before that, we got to talk a little bit about this one. This is called sigma notation. Now, uh, this could be a little bit tricky to understand, but uh, this big E thing right here stands for uh, capital sigma and it's sigma for sum meaning we're adding a bunch of numbers together okay where we start with n is equal to 1 and we go all the way to uh, n is equal to 4 all right that's what that means and we're adding them all up so actually this would be a series where we're adding these together so for example uh, the first term would be negative 1 to the 1 power and it's 1 plus 1 then we'd say negative one to the two power plus two plus one. Oh, oh sorry, uh, times two plus one. Then the next one would be negative one to the three power times three plus one. And then the last one would be negative one to the fourth, fourth power times four plus one. Kind of like that. All right, obviously you can type that into a calculator and that'd be fine. Um, same thing down here. So the first guy here, and we can put this in parentheses, would be 4 times 2 minus 3 plus 4 times 3 minus 3 plus 4 times 4 minus 3. See what I'm doing here? And I want to go all the way up to 6. So 4 times 5 minus 3 plus 4 times 6 minus 3. And I don't want to do, I don't want to do the whole homework for you, but that's the general idea. All right? you want to add all the terms together where first n is going to start at 2, then it's going to be 3, then it's going to be 4, 5, and then 6. And you want to do that for all these guys, in a nutshell. All right, now we're talking about number 4. So this one is going to start talking about an arithmetic uh, sequence. This is where we get into the meat and potatoes of the whole matter. Okay, for this we're going to use the scratch pad. So, uh, the formula that we're going to be using is u1, I'm sorry, un is equal to u, come on, u1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, and we're trying to look for the ninth term, so that would be u sub 9. Uh, the first term for this first guy is the number 5, so we'll put a 5 right there. Uh, we're looking for the ninth term, so n is going to be equal to, right, this is n minus 1. We're going to change, you know what, that's a good idea. Let me do it like this. Let's copy the formula down. N minus 1d. All right, what is the first term? All right, well, the first term here is 5. Uh, n is going to be 9, and d. So we got to figure out how much this is going up by every time. And upon inspection, you see that it's the number uh, 8. So we're going to change that to 8. Okay, and when we type this into a cool calculator, we get 5 times, oh, so 5 plus, sorry, n minus 1 times d, I get 85. Okay, so a would have to be 85. All right, oh. What did I do wrong? Oh, 9 minus 1. Oops. 69. 69. Sorry. I, I put a plus in my calculator instead of a minus. There we go. 
69, 69, there we go. All right, and you keep going like that. Uh, you're just plugging it into a nice formula. It's not a big deal. Number four is not that bad. All right, number five, uh, this is where things get a little trickier. So uh, again, we're going to rely on our formula. I don't want to do the whole homework for you, but it's un is equal to u1 plus n minus 1 times d again. All right, this time it's going to be the 21st term. So u21 is equal to u sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. All right, so u21, u sub 21 is 65. The first term we do not know. N is 21, right? That's, that's the term we're on. And D is going to be negative 2. So now we just got to do some algebra to solve for U sub 1, which would mean 65 minus, minus 1 times negative 2. I get 105. All right, so U sub 1 should equal 105, just like that. All right, you can do some algebra to figure out what U sub 1 is. Should be... 105, like that. All right, so all these things are going to require some fancy schmancy uh, algebra. Okay. Pretty much all these. And we're going to be talking about geometric sequences in a second. So uh, that would be that. So let's keep going with the, uh, with the guy. Now, there's going to be times where you'll need to work out systems of equations. This is where I'm going to take a moment to talk about how to do systems of equations, okay? So, um, there are going to be times where you'll have a couple of different equations going on at the same time across, you know, multiple equations. You're going to need to solve for that stuff. There are many methods that you can use to solve these equations, all right? There's substitution, there's elimination, and obviously there's graphing. Graphing always works. Uh, my favorite is row reduction. Uh, it is the way that computers solve systems of equations. It is the most efficient, fastest way. And you can do it on a calculator in one button. Uh, I call it the one button method. It's really nice. It's legal. So if you have it on an SAT and you get a system of equations, you can solve it in however long it takes you to type it in. You know, it's really easy. Uh, but you can't always use that. Sometimes you've got to use uh, elimination or graphing or something like that. Okay. Uh, now, in this class, you will don't you don't want to use technology a whole lot. It's a lot more on your skills. Technology does play a role in certain aspects, but for the most part, we're going to want to use our abilities. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk about the worst way. So, the absolute worst way, absolute hideous way to do systems of equations would be substitution, and this one we all know and hate. This is where you solve for x in the first equation, and you plug it, plug that into the other equation to solve for y, plug that in, back then to get x. And here's a hideous example. So you got 2x plus 3y equals 5, 4x plus 5y equals 6. Hideous. <coughs> Hate it. Don't like it. Don't want to do it. Don't want to deal with it. All right? We don't like this at all where you take the first guy, you solve for x, you take the second guy, plug it in, and you gotta solve for y, y is equal to four, then you gotta plug four back into the second guy and gotta solve for x. So y is equal to four, x is equal to negative seven over two. Hate it. Now a better way, the one that you will very likely use a whole lot is elimination. Elimination is uh, quite a bit easier, requires a less uh, work by far uh, a lot faster than substitution. So this is where, you know, you want to multiply the top row so that the x coefficients are the same and subtract those equations in order to cancel out the x's. Then you want to solve for y and plug it back in to get x. So there's a little bit of substitution in the end, but in the, it, ultimately it's a lot easier. So if we take the previous example, 2x plus 3y equals 5, 4x plus 5y equals 6. So what you want to do here is you want to make the x's go away. So you multiply the top by 2. Ooh. You multiply the top by 2. So that way you get 4x, 6y, and 5 times 2 is 10. Now we can subtract the uh, bottom row from the top row. 4x minus 4x, those guys cancel out. 6y minus 5y is just 1y. 10 minus 6 is 4. And that's where we were before. So now you can take the 4 and plug it back into either one of them. doesn't matter. 
and you will get x is equal to negative 7 over 2 again. This is a lot easier. Um, not the best, best way. The best, best way would be row reduction, but, you know, that's beyond the scope of this course. Row reduction is um, the best, easily the best. But you don't have access to that, unfortunately. we guys got to press on. If we have time, we'll talk about row reduction when I get back. All right. So, for example, if we go back to where was it here? Here. Okay. If we go back to this guy, okay, and you get something that looks like this. Given that two terms in an arithmetic sequence are equal to these two guys, find the value of the 19th term. Okay. Um, all right. We still have our equation, you know, uh, where it's, you know, u sub n is equal to u sub 1 plus n minus 1d. That's our bread and butter. Um, nothing crazy going on there. Uh, but now we've got a system of equations. All right. So this time we've got, let's set this up here. We've got a da, 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 And let's get this guy. Uh -huh. Let me set this up here. So I've got u sub 5 is equal to negative 3.7. Uh, sorry, no, no, no. It's equal to u sub 1 plus n minus 1d. And then this guy is u sub 15 is equal to u sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. All right. I should put that in a bracket. There we go. Okay. Now, that's our, equa uh, that's our system of equations, but we've got we to substitute this stuff in. So for this first guy, n is equal to 5. For the second guy, n is equal to 15. Uh, yes, we're going to do it for you. Can I ask you a question? What do you got? Okay, so I know you said gray is a warm up, but I did the warm up, but it was still like open on my laptop. Okay, sorry about that. Minor interruption here. Okay, so as I was saying, <clears throat> n was 5, here n is 15. We do not know what u sub 1 and, and, uh, and d are. However, u sub 5, this first guy, is going to be negative 3.7. And the second guy here is going to be negative 52.3. Okay. Now, nice thing about this uh, equation, and we could probably make this look a little bit nicer. How about RCL? So that way it's a little bit more aligned. Doesn't look great. Why doesn't it look great? Huh, weird. It's not aligning properly. Anyway, um, I want to eliminate this guy. I don't want to do substitution. So let's subtract the top from the bottom because then the u sub 1s and the u sub 1s, those guys will cancel out. All right, we got to figure out what u sub 1 and d are. we got to figure out what the first term is. So let's subtract this, okay? So first, what is negative 3.7 minus negative 52.3? What's that going to equal? I am going to get 48.6. So I just subtracted uh, these two together. These guys cancel out. And uh, by the way, 15 minus 1 is just... Uh, 5 minus 1 is just 4d, and 15 minus 1, this is just 14. So what's 4 minus 14? This guy will be negative 10d, which means when we divide both sides, d should equal negative 4.86. All right, now we can plug this back into to anything else, and we can figure out what the next guy is. So why don't we use the first equation, negative 3.7 is equal to u sub 1 plus 4 times negative 4.86. All right, and now we can solve for u sub 1. So now negative 3.7, we can add 4.86. Cool, I got 15.74 for u sub 1. So u sub, u sub 1 
should equal 15.74. But that's not where we're at. That's not the end of the situation. Because not asking for the first term and the common difference is asking for the 19th term. So the 19th term, all right, u sub 19 should equal the first term, 15.74, plus n minus 1, so 19 minus 1, times d. Well, d is negative 4.86. So when we type this in, all right, we got that plus 19 minus 1 times negative 4.86. I got negative 71.74. That guy right there. Okay. So this guy should be negative 71.74, I believe. Uh, what did I do wrong? The value of the 19th term. I don't believe I did anything wrong. Yeah, I did that. 48.6 divided by negative 10. Uh huh. Plug it back in. Uh huh. Add that 15. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, here's an example where the answer key is probably boosted. Let's fix that. Negative 76.74. Who did that? Oof, typo. It's not even close to the keyboard. Negative 71.74. There we go. Now you should be good. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, that's an example where you would do elimination in order to figure out the um, in order to figure out the answer that you want. So again, this one should be, as I was saying, negative 71.74. Happy times. Okay. So that's systems of equations in a nutshell. Now, moving on. Okay, so now we're going to talk about geometric sequences. Okay? So before, we were talking about arithmetic sequences. Right? Arithmetic sequences are where it's going up by a common difference. We're adding or subtracting the same amount every time. Well, with geometric sequences, instead of adding the same difference every time. We're going to be multiplying by the same difference every single time. Okay? And it's geometric, I think, because that's how you find area and volume and stuff like that. You keep multiplying the edges together. So length times width times height times the fourth dimension times the fifth dimension times the sixth dimension. Hyperdimensional shapes. Geometric sequence. All right, and we call this constant ratio here, the thing we're multiplying by over and over. That's the idea. So trying to find the common ratio would be uh, paramount. So uh, a note about systems of equations with this guy. Uh, we should probably uh, pause for a second and look at some of the homeworks with that. So a geometric sequence. Okay, it doesn't really... Okay, so uh, it's just diving right into it. It's not really giving you a chance to do basic stuff. So uh, we're going to do systems of equations now. All right? Now, systems of equations, you dive right into it with this uh, homework. Um, it's a lot like doing systems of equations with arithmetic sequences, but this time it would be hard to use something like row reduction and traditional elimination where you subtract. And the reason being is because they're being multiplied all the time. So instead of multiplying the equations, we're going to divide the equations. All right. Before we had to subtract. Uh, a, a small note it, uh, that you probably want to know. If your common ratio is smaller than 1, then your sequence is going to converge. N you know, And if it's greater than 1, you're going to diverge. So converge means it's going to get closer and closer to 0. Right, and that makes sense. If I'm multiplying by 10% um, every single time, then I'll take 10% and then 10% of 10%, and then 10% of 10% of 10%, and then 10% of 10% of 10% of 10%. And I just keep multiplying by 10%. It's going to get smaller and smaller and approach zero. Whereas if I am doubling every time, this would be the sequence that's going to diverge. If I double every time, then it's going to diverge 
and very quickly too. It's going to diverge to like infinity, if you will. Um, there is an old story uh, that is usually told whenever we uh, teach um, geometric stuff. So, yeah, that's probably the end of it. Here, hold on a second. Let's let's tell the story before we move on. Okay, so let, I'm going to tell you the story about this uh, ancient king. He um, he was a very avid chess player. Uh, this was an Egyptian king, something like that. I can't remember the exact story. I can look it up here. But um, there was a really famous Arab who had created the game of chess. And this local king, he was a really big chess fan, and he really liked it. So the legend goes. It's obviously not true. And he wanted to reward this guy who invented chess with whatever his heart desired. You can, you can do anything you want, all right? as long as it's doable and within reason. So the, this chess master, the guy who invented chess, he was like, all right, just being a little facetious here. He said, I want you to uh, take out a chess board and you're gonna start by putting one grain of rice on the first square. Then you're gonna go over one square and I want you to put, I think you can do sand, so like one grain of sand. Then on the second one, I want you to put two grains of sand. And on the third one, I want you to put four grains of sand, and then eight grains of sand, and then 16 grains of sand, and so on and so forth. And uh, that will be how much sand I get. I guess some stories say gold or rice. It doesn't matter. All right. And uh, the, the king was like, oh, well, that's all you want, just some sand or some gold or whatever. I could do that. But the problem was, you get to the point where he uh, there's 64 um, there's 64 squares on a chessboard, and you get two to the 64th power, which is, I believe, more atoms. Like there's not that many atoms in the observable universe, or something nuts like that. So it was kind of a ridiculous thing. But the point is that things that get multiplied over and over, exponential growth, it tends to grow very quickly, uh, quicker than you might imagine. That's the idea. Okay, so back to talking about a geometric uh, sequence here while you, while you get set up over there. All right, so I'm going to find a hard one. Like number nine would seem pretty hard. Um, here we got to figure out what the 15th term is, for example. So this time we got a different set of equations here. The, the, the equation is going to be this. U sub n is equal to u sub 1 r to the n minus one power. That's the guy. Um, now, the difficult part here is when we start talking about um, systems of equations and trying to find stuff. So, just give me one second, please. This is gonna be uh, u sub one r to the n minus one power. Then u sub 10 is equal to u sub 1, oops, u sub 1 to the n minus 1 power. There we go. Nice. All right, give me one second again. All right, I keep getting interrupted here. All right, but we're back, we're back, we're back. Okay, so if we look at this information here, we've got u sub 5 is equal to this, u sub 10 is equal to this. Now note that n for this first guy is 5, and n for the second guy here is 10, right? Which means that this top guy should be a 4, this bottom guy should be a 9. And u sub 5 is 40. And u sub 10 here is 303.75. Okay, what we want to do is you want to eliminate. And the best way to eliminate would be to divide. So on the left, we're going to have uh, 303.75 over 40. And 
not turning into the thing that I want. Oh, that's because I have this guy. I see what's going on here. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to divide. And I'm going to divide the bottom to the top. So over here I got u sub 1, by the way. So u sub 1, r to the ninth power. And I got u sub 1, r to the fourth power. I apologize for it looking really jumbled here. So I just took the uh, bottom guy, divided by the top guy. And the reason is because I want r to the ninth power divided by r to the fourth power, so I get a positive exponent. It looks nicer that way. Now, if you look carefully, the u sub 1s, this guy right here and this guy right here, they cancel out. All right, so we can delete these two guys. They go away. And what you get now is uh, this guy on the left. So 303.75 divided by 40. I got this big number, so 7.59375 is equal to r to the fifth power. All right, now the way we get rid of that five would be we gotta raise this to the one-fifth power. So 593.75, uh, we gotta raise this to the one over five power. That'll equal r. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to raise him to the 1 over 5 power in our calculator. And lo and behold, r is equal to 1.5, which is nice. Now we're going to use this information to figure out what uh, u sub 1 is. So I'm going to take that equation, 40 is equal to u sub 1 uh, times r raised to the 4th power. r is 1.5. Okay, so I, I replaced the r with 1.5. That means that u sub 1 has to equal, uh, let's see, it's going to be 40 over 1.5 raised to the fourth power. All right, so what's 40 divided by 1.5 raised to the fourth power? I got some crazy fraction here. Uh, that looks to equal 640. 640 over 81. Okay, so our equation should be u sub n is equal to uh, this fraction, so 640 over 81, times 1.5 raised to the n minus 1 power. That's our equation. So now when we're looking for the 15th term, u sub 15, this is going to equal, whoa, hello, 15, there we go. It's going to be a nice fraction, 640 over 81 times 1.5 raised to the n minus 1 power, where n is now going to be 15. All right, and what's that going to equal? Okay, well, it's going to be this times 1.5 raised to the 14th power. And I get this crazy long number. Can I turn it into a nice fraction? Yes, I can. So I made it a nice fraction. I've got 295245 over 128. If you use a decimal, it's totally fine. So if you use a decimal, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be totally fine. But you can also use a, um, it says to use scientific notation, uh, which is also totally fine. So it says put in scientific notation. So that would be 2.31 times 10 to the 3 power. Okay, so 2.31 times 10 to the 3 power. Uh, well, that didn't work. What's going on with number 9? What's wrong with this guy? Where did that come from? I don't know where that came from. That's not right. <sighs> 2.306 times 10 to the 3 power. Uh, 
That's why we double check. If any of the answer key is wrong, guys, uh, just leave it there. We'll talk about it when I get back. I apologize for the craziness. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, if you do scientific notation, that's totally fair, but you can also just do this, 295, 245, all over 128. It should take it with no problem, yes. Very nice, and that's the idea. Some of these are going to require some thinking. Find the number of terms of geometric units. This is going to require a little bit of thinking as well. And, of course, we've got an applied problem as well. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. Try to do as many as you can, and we'll try to talk about it when I get back. Um, on what Friday and I'll see you guys in class take care bye bye